Let's take a look at the image statistic operations in Images Plus 3. Well, I've got a color image displayed here. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so I can move it down close to the status bar here, and we'll go through the status bar in detail. Uh, an open image caption has its file name, its color type, RGB is for color, red, green, and blue. If it were a monochrome grayscale image, it would just say gray there. And then it has the percentage at which the image is displayed. Now that 48% means it's displayed It's with respect to your screen resolution. So this image has to be displayed at 48% of its original pixel width and height to get it this size on this particular screen. The image width and height of the full image is shown by this pane right here, 880 by 586. The next pane over to the right shows the uh, display percent that's used at the moment to display the image. Uh, the next pane over right here, this is the pixel coordinates underneath the mouse. Now pixel coordinates are measured from the top left corner of the image. See how it says 7, 5 right now? As I move it to the right, the X coordinate increases just like you'd expect. But as I move it down, the Y coordinate increases. And that's a little different than what you might be used to. Normally X increases from left to right and Y increases as you move up. But in image processing, the origin isn't down here at the lower left. It's actually at the upper left. Positive X is to the right, and positive Y is down. So at this point, that's pixel coordinate 593, 294 in Y. 593 across, 294 down. <clears throat> OK. The next pane, uh, I, that's the intensity under the pixel at uh, whatever position the mouse is pointing to. In this case, it'd be pixel 593314. And that's a 16-bit uh, intensity value. So for a color image, you'd take the red, green, and blue values and build the intensity out of them, and that's what's displayed there. For a monochrome image, uh, red, green, and blue is considered the same value, and it's really just the single pixel intensity under the pixel. Okay, the next pane over right here, um, that's the red, green, and blue 8 bit coordinate value, or I'm sorry, uh, pixel value underneath the cursor. So as I move the cursor around, see here it's uh, pointing to a rather red area and 105 is the red value and it's a lot higher than the 62 and 71 for green and blue respectively. And I come over here to a dark area, it's all 0, 0, 0, which means black for all red, green, and blue at that point. And the last pane is right here, and this is the full path to the image that's currently highlighted, which would be this image. Now, here, let me open up another one here. Here's a grayscale image. And see, as I change the active image, the status bar reflects the, uh, the value that goes with the current image. Here I'm pointing at a grayscale, and if you look down there in the lower right pane of the status bar, it's, they're all equal because it's a grayscale image. Here they change. OK. Now let's close that. Come up here. OK, now the toolbars right in this area, these will all tell you something, some statistic about the image, whether it be a measurement, a brightness, uh, a line profile, or the commands that have been applied to a particular image to get it to its current state that it's displayed at. So let's go through these in order. First one's the histogram. Uh, when it opens, the histogram is not built, and this is because with really large images, it can take a few seconds to actually generate the histogram, and for that reason, I've got this histogram update button. 
So what you want to do is pick the image you want to build the histogram for and then press the update button. Now with a smaller image it's almost instant. Okay, it's a red, green, blue image. It's a color. So I can s switch between the blue, green, and red histogram or the luminance. This part of the histogram gives me uh, st overall global statistics. The overall average is 32 in 8-bit or 8364 in 16-bit. Standard deviation of the entire image in 16-bit. The median is 5 in 8-bit or 1445 in 16-bit and uh, there are a little more than half a million pixels in this image which is really 888 times 586 here. And as you move the mouse across the histogram you notice this part of it changes. And that tells you, uh, well the level that you're pointing at here is 81. That's a 8-bit level. The intensities, well that's the 16-bit level that corresponds to the 81 8-bit level. And it's a range there because for each 8-bit level there's a range of 16-bit levels that fall into that single 8-bit level. Percent, well 81% of the pixels are less than or equal to this, this grayscale uh, or luminance value. And the number 2051, that's how many pixels have 81 as an 8-bit value in the image or whose 16-bit value falls between 2736 and 2991. And of course, as you move this, it'll change. So as you go to the right, more and more pixels are less than or equal to that brighter level. And when you get all the way to the right of the histogram, everything's going to be included there. And you can do the same thing with the red, green, and blue. Okay, that's histogram. <clears throat> Next one is line profile. Well, with this command, what you do, there's three ways to use it. You can left click and draw a line, and then the line profile will give you the pixel values along that line. Here it's set to luminance. If it's a color image like this one, you can do red, green, and blue. And then you can move your cursor along that curve and it'll give you particular values right in here. So right at the moment I'm uh, looking at a value of 28014 uh, in 16-bit or 109 in 8-bit and that's at pixel coordinate 507329 looking in this part. Okay, uh, going back to luminance, you could use a horizontal profile, and here you just click on the image. It's a nice way to check the background flatness. Or you can use a vertical profile. Okay, and uh, you can save these values in a text file if you want to do some number crunching on them, things of that type. And over here it gives you the uh, 16 and 8-bit min and max pixel value along the uh, line profile that you have and also its position in the image. Okay, it's a handy tool. <coughs> Next one, it'd be the crosshair statistics window. Alright, uh, this part of it is global statistics. The image size, its zoom percent, the overall minimum and maximum, and these are all 16-bit values median, average, deviation. Since it's color, those statistics are red, green, and blue, or luminance. As I move the mouse across the image, you see now it, up in this part, it gives me the pixel coordinate that I'm pointing at, the intensity in 8-bit 106, and its counterpart in 16-bit would be 27400. And then over to the right, top right, the RGB would be the 8-bit on the top and 16-bit RGB values that I'm pointing at. And then in this part of the image, it gives me neighborhood statistics. Now the size here is initially set to 1 by 1 or just 1 pixel. 
can hold the control key down and left click to make that neighborhood bigger. See now it's 7 by 7 and those statistics now apply to uh, the 7 by 7 neighborhood. Or you can hold the control key down and uh, right click to make it this pixel uh, neighborhood smaller or larger. Okay, here I'm doing a 69 by 69 and I get very different statistics. Now the the cursor here when the smaller size pixel neighborhoods are used it's fairly accurate but the larger it gets the the uh, the cursor points to the center of it but may not include the entire uh, uh, neighborhood that's being used. Okay and then you can switch between red green and blue and define your pixel uh, neighborhood for each one of those. That's crosshair statistics. <clears throat> uh, the star shape, this can be used either in its default mode where you move the cursor around and it'll uh, measure the shape of uh, well-defined stars underneath the cursor. It gives you brightness, background, full width, half flux diameter, its eccentricity, things of that type. Uh, it's set so that uh, not every star that you point at will be measured. Like if there's too many stars to get a good measurement or if stars are embedded in uh, a galaxy or a nebula with all sorts of other things going around, you may not get a reading. It likes to take readings on isolated, single, well-defined stars. So you may need to, to you know, be a little bit careful which star you're picking for this measurement. If you want to analyze the whole image, take the complete image option and then press update and it'll go through and see with this whole image I've only used 4 or 14 stars basically for all the different color channels and it'll give you an average uh, brightness, background level. I didn't say compute full width and half flux. If these were checked, those would be computed too. And it gives you the average major and minor axis. Uh, the average eccentricity is 0.38, which is slightly oval in this star. And that makes sense because this was taken without any auto-guiding, really. It was just a reasonably polar aligned scope and uh, that's pretty much uh, what star shape does. It helps you analyze the shape and quality of the stars. Image attributes well with a FITS image when you stack them in Image Plus it'll put quite a bit of information in the FITS header here. Uh, image width, image height, type of combination used, sigma median, how many files, where did it come from, Canon 20D, ISO 800, shutter speed of the images, uh, here's the actual image list that was used to stack this particular image, uh, and then you'll also get the standard fits uh, header information down at the bottom there. Uh, Let's see. The intensity grid. This is useful if you want to right click on an area of the image and actually see the different intensity values. And these are all 16 bit. Since it's a color image, you've got the red, green, and blue intensity grid there. And again, that's just the values that are underneath the cursor when you, you right click on it. Um, you can select one, go in and type a value, if you, or uh, you could check the from grid, pick a value, and then apply the grid and just click on it to uh, apply the value. And then once you hit apply, it'll actually change the value in your grid, uh, things of that type. color grid. This is similar to intensity, but now you work with the color. 
Uh, you may want to select a color from the grid here. Let's say that color and then apply it uh, either one by one pixel or let's use a five by five pixel area. This kind of thing. You can use this to fix local defects. Uh, you make your changes here and then once you're done you press apply and that'll change the value over here in the image. Uh, it's used for light duty uh, editing or inspection of the image. It's nice to be able to zoom in at that level and see what's going on too. And again it's available for color image in red, green, or blue. Display it as grayscale if you like. Full color or if it's a gray image only gray is available. You can use these buttons to move your view around. Okay. And the last one is the uh, process history button. And this we're going to spend a lot of time on this command in the next few videos. This is the command that tracks the changes that were made to your to your open image. So basically if you have several images open, you select one and this window will automatically update to the one that you selected and show all the commands that you implied to the image in order and also the, uh, the parameters used for each command. Uh, yeah, here I read it. Uh, there's a pixel grid. Uh, I, next I did a, a, a color grid, took a look at it. Uh, this is real handy when you start to modify the appearance of the image with enhancement filters that, uh, and all the different parameters. This will track it for you. And it's tied into this unlimited undo and redo here. See as you step backwards and forwards this current operation updates. Now with the two commands I've just used it doesn't show you a lot of information because of the type of the command but as you'll see in the next couple of videos it really tracks all the parameters that were applied to this particular image. Okay.